wrestling to the max. Smackdown. Review. All right, hello and welcome to the rest of the Max Smackdown Live review for August 23rd, 2016. And this was the Smackdown right after SummerSlam from Uncasville, Connecticut in the Mohegan Sun Arena. And joining me today, as usual, Mr. Paul Leeser. Hey, yo. And our special guest, first time on the podcast, period, for anything we've done, uh, Mr. John Blaine. Thanks for having me. Hey, man, always, always a pleasure uh, to have new folks. And, you know, so let people know, like, kind of what you do, man. I'm a writer for Inscriber Digital Magazine. I pretty much, most of the stuff I write is basically sports-related and wrestling-related, but pretty much it's whatever I'm asked to write about, I will usually put together. All right. See, there you go. You need to go read this man's stuff over there on. Uh, so on the on the website, it just shows up. Uh, what so people can look can find it there. Uh, so there is a lot of us on there. I mean, what you can do is if you go to the website, you can type my name in John Blaine B L A Y N A, and you can get all my stuff up there. I actually just posted an article about an hour ago on some UFC stuff. And if you click on my name on the article on Ronda Rousey, you can get every article that I wrote for the website that have been a part of it. All right. Sweet. So, guys, uh, the Daniel Bryan, before this show, uh, was on Twitter saying that they will debut, announce, showcase two new titles. Uh, of course, everybody speculated, everybody talked about in the group. Uh, that, you know, John's a part of, and of course we are part of that, that Wrestling the Max uh, Facebook group. People talked about pretty much tag team women's titles. Uh, no surprise there. But what did you guys think of the look of the titles, uh, John? I mean, I thought the women's title, honestly, both of them, and it didn't really bother me. So I thought the tag team one looked a little bit different than the one that's on Raw just because it's a different color plate. And... I, I, the other one didn't surprise me because it seems like WWE now is pretty much making every title look the same way. So there's, I didn't really think there was any real originality with either belt. Yeah, I mean, there's no originality. I think the tag belts look ugly as sin. Like, they, the penny belts over on Raw, you got nickel belts over on SmackDown. It's, <laughs> it's exactly what I thought when I saw it. I was like, wow, so we have pennies and nickels now. That's great. I, mean, I'm, I think I'm in the minority, though. I don't hate the look of the universal title, so I, I think the women's title looks fine. Yeah, it's just the women's title with some blue in it. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, they're going for that branding, going for sort of everything looking uniform, which kind of stinks. And <laughs> you like it just being called the SmackDown? Women's, not even like the world women's, nothing. No, No weird name for this. It's just a SmackDown women's title, SmackDown tag titles. It is what it is. <laughs> I mean, but like crazy that they wouldn't try to do kind of like what they did with the Universal title where you could still use that even if you don't have the brand extension somewhere down the line. Well, I, I, uh, uh, go ahead, John. No, what I was going to say is what I kind of felt was interesting, though, is I think when they did this whole brand split, and they were going to be introducing both of these titles through the titles for SmackDown and then have the titles on Raw. I figured they would have, like you guys said before, would have at least called it like the SmackDown World Title or something just to separate the two. Because basically, it looks like yeah, they're doing two shows. It looks like they pretty much have the same belt throughout both shows. Then. I think when it comes to branding, I think they wanted to avoid whatever confusion you might have had back in the first brand split where you had the World Heavyweight title on SmackDown and the WWE Tag Team titles on SmackDown, and then you had the WWE World title on Raw, and you had the World Heavyweight Tag titles on SmackDown. So I think it just links back to that uniformity deal where you, you have branding, specific branding for each one, and it's this and this, and that's the difference. 
Fair enough. I, I, I get what but, you're saying. I definitely get what you're saying. So they set up a... I'm trying to remember right. So they set up this tournament for the tag team titles uh, with all the tag teams. Mm. And then they set up for the women... Was it just they're going to have, I guess, singles? It's a six-pack challenge at Backlash. Yeah. So all six girls in the ring for the women's championship at Backlash, which should be it's that's different. I think it'll be cool. Did you like the fact that at least they made both of these things different? They didn't just do, okay, we're going to have a six-pack challenge for both. I actually, I thought that you couldn't really do a six-pack challenge for the tag house just because that would have basically been a repeat of what we saw on the kickoff show at SummerSlam, essentially. So I like the fact that they're doing this whole thing with the tournament idea, and I know we'll probably get into the tournament uh, as we go on. On the other side, with the women's side, I mean, it, it, you gotta, it, it doesn't surprise me that that's what they're doing. You have these six women who haven't really been fighting for anything in the last couple of weeks, and the fact that they would basically put them all in the ring together and basically be like, okay, here you go, we're giving you this match, doesn't surprise me. What I think they would have done is almost done like almost like an elimination type of match. That would have been interesting. Uh, WWE's never been a big one for elimination matches, though. Although, if they wanted to do that, I think it would have been cool to do a gauntlet match for the for the tag titles or something like that at Backlash, but... I think what they're doing with the women is the right way to go. You have the big match at the end that everybody's building for, and you can ha- you can build up feuds and characters on the road to Backlash, which is still something they need to do for a lot of these girls is really establish them. For the tag teams, you have the tournament, which is great. Um, it focuses on the, the wrestling part that they're trying to get over with tag team wrestling, and then you have the uh, the fun wrinkle of Heath Slater, which I really enjoyed. Yeah, Heath Slater got involved here, and... <laughs> I love the fact that Shane's just like, I mean, I don't even know how you keep getting into the building, but we're <laughs> going to address that. And uh, basically, you know, Shane's like, well, okay, man, if you can find you a tag partner, which he says, like, I can go back there and find anybody right now. We'll make this an 18 tournament. But in order for you to get a contract, you have to actually win the entire thing. Uh, he's got to get at least past the first round, right? I think, honestly, with Heath Slater, I think that's what they're going to end up pushing for. Because I look at it this way. They brought Jinder Mahal back. They brought him on Raw. They're not going to put Slater on her as well. If they put Slater on Raw, he's going to get thrown in the shuffle. I think you put him on SmackDown, I think he may have a shot to do something at least. Yeah, I mean, I think he ends up on SmackDown at some point too. But I I think him and Rhino... um, which, uh, spoiler, I guess, he finds Rhino. Uh, <laughs> he, uh, I think they, they'll make it to the finals, surprisingly, and then they'll, they'll dump it to, to American Alpha. Yeah, it's uh, obviously Rhino being the guy that have been, you could almost say, like, harassing. He's slain it for, like, the first two or three weeks that he was there, just goring him out of everywhere. And all of a sudden, now I want to be partners with you, which, uh, you know, Dudley's uh, comedy... Uh, at work here, but it, it sort of it it uh, tells the story. Uh, Heath Slater talking to Arn Anderson was hilarious, uh, of course. And uh, did he? And he tried to get Miz to be his partner, mm-hmm. which was funny <laughs> as well. Um, did you like the way they they're just man? It's it's so crazy to see like Heath Slater getting all this face time. I mean. I, I think overall, though, I think maybe this whole brand split thing, in the end, will actually benefit somebody like a Heath Slater, because when they had everybody together, he was pretty much getting thrown in the shuffle. Now that he's on SmackDown, and you only have half the roster with you, you may get, I, just, I mean, I don't want to steal Shane's pun here, but he may be able to get more opportunities to be on SmackDown than he would be on Raw at the, at, at the current time. It's very true. I mean, we could see him end up in the Intercontinental title picture someday. Um, I, You know, we'll have to see where they go with him once the free agent story's over. Because uh, I think that's what's been helping so much is all the space time plus 
you know, all the fun angles he's gotten a chance to be in just because of this whole thing. So, uh, we'll have to see where they go once it's over. Uh, and, uh, you know, they also set up uh, this other thing that they set up before the show because, you know, they've been doing this thing where before the show we do this little segment. And this time it was AJ getting to proclaim that he is now the face that runs the place. Uh, got to look silly wearing the, the wristband as a headband. And then he called out Dolph Ziggler for being a loser. <laughs> and Dolph Ziggler got heated. So later, Styles kind of does the same thing. He kinda, he comes out, talks about sort of those similar things to the crowd. And then Ziggler gets mad. And uh, Brian comes in and sets up a match where Ziggler, if he wins, he gets to be added to the world title match at Backlash between Styles and Dean Ambrose. Did you guys like that we're just... Obviously, continues Ziggler's story, but the fact that he lost at SummerSlam, we're already trying to give him another title shot. I'm curious to see, because I know they said since he lost that they won't be in the main event at Backlash. I'm curious to see if somehow, in the next couple of weeks, he somehow convinces Shane and Daniel Bryan to somehow put him in the main event thing. But as far as AJ Styles and what he did in that opening segment, I kind of figured that was going to happen after he won against Dina uh, two nights ago at SummerSlam. It was kind of almost expected because you have to look at it this way. If you look at the heels on Raw, on, Raw, on SmackDown, you have AJ, you have um, The Miz, you have, that would be viable people. I mean, really, that's all I can even think of off the top of my head. Uh, you got Bray on that heel list, too, who's uh, seemed to be spoken for as his dancing partner's about to be Super Randy. But, uh, yeah, I, I didn't mind this because I feel it continues to work into the story they've already started for Dolph, where he's got this chip on his shoulder and he's trying to consistently prove that he deserves to be in the conversation and be the world heavyweight champion. I don't have a problem with it, especially whenever you have Daniel coming out week after week saying he, that, you know, SmackDown is about underdogs and you feel like he's going to continue to give opportunities to the guys who are underdogs. And that's Dolph. Oh, I mean, ultimately, now where do you go from here with him? I think he's the next feud for The Miz. I think that would be a, a great way to keep that story going. And uh, if you let him overcome The Miz, then he can. you have somebody strong enough to work with a lot of these younger faces that you have without getting the Miz involved if you don't want to go that route. Or he could follow the Miz and, and eventually turn heel, which is a, a way to go, too. Well, well uh, I kinda, go ahead. Go ahead. No, the only thing I was going to say with that is, I understand what you're saying, and, I, and that is one of the bad idea. But I figured for a while, even before Ziggler had his match at SummerSlam, I figured, I mean, there were signs where they were going to turn and heel. So I think overall, though, I mean... And I like the idea of pairing him with the Miz just because they had the chemistry from, you know, years ago. And also I think he'd be a lot better for the Miz than somebody like Apollo Crews. But I think if you have them, if you had Bob Ziggler take the IC title, that maybe you could put him with, a, with an Apollo Crews, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my only issue is we've seen Ziggler and Miz a lot in the past. It so, doesn't need to be long. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it doesn't need to be, um, but, you know, it it is something we have seen uh, quite often. So, I mean, but also, you know, this roster is very thin, and you're going to run into those kind of, they're eventually going to have rematches because, I mean, what can you do when a lot of these guys have faced each other so many times over the years? But, uh, I mean, I don't know if you watched it, Paul, but uh, The Miz had one hell of a promo on Talking Smack. I mean, I you talk about... We talk about Dolph having these passionate promos. Miz had a awesome passionate promo where he goes off on Brian because Brian basically tells him, "Look, I don't like the way you wrestle. That's why I don't uh, respect you and I don't give you time on TV." And so Miz goes after him for like, "Well, look, man, at least I don't hurt myself all the time doing your indie style and all that." And he's like, "I've been here for ten years and all this and." Uh, I just want my IC title to be respected like all the other titles here. You're giving all these other titles a lot of time. You give me nothing. 
what about that? You know, I beat my guy clean. I didn't cheat. I mean, just man, he looked straight into the camera and said a bunch of stuff, and it was just it was awesome. Like I would definitely go back and watch it. And also going with Talking Smack is they had two women's matches. They had Becky and Alexa Bliss, which was short. I thought it was, you know, good for what it was. But you had another match that didn't start with Carmella and Nikki, where Carmella beat the crap out of Nikki. And then on Talking Smack, Nikki was the guest. Carmella went and beat the crap out of Nikki again and didn't let her finish talking. And they had to have the Usos separate them and everything else. So, how do you guys like what they did with the women here? Just, uh, man, really, at least with Carmella, she's got a new uh, new look for herself. I, I mean, I'll, well, I'll talk about the Carmella and Nikki thing first. I, it kind of works out, actually, in Carmella's favor, because in, in some kind of sense, you could almost say they're kind of elevating her character a bit to go up with somebody like a Nikki, and I can see them having a feud that could go on, not for a while, so to speak, but it can have a decent feud between them. And then with the other one with Becky and Alexa, I mean, like Sean, like you said, it was short. It it did what it had to do. It showed that. I mean, I still think Becky should be one of the favorites to win their match at Backlash. I I've, I've said that for a while now, and it really has been shown that that WWE, Shane McMahon and Daniel Bryan are really pushing Becky to really like, go up for that title. I, um, you know, I've, I've said it since the first time we've seen Carmella on NXT. She looks like a heel. She acts like a heel. Yet she's a face. And it only took them two years to figure out that I might be onto <laughs> something. <laughs> Uh, no, but in all seriousness, I'm really excited for this. It, it makes Carmella interesting, and seeing as she was pretty much dead on arrival up to the main roster in a call-up that was way too soon, uh, hopefully she can make the most of this opportunity and turn it around and really get something going with Nikki Bella. Uh, on the flip side, uh, I think Becky and Alexa Bliss had a pretty solid match. It wasn't very long, but then again, maybe it didn't need to be, and you still get uh, Naomi and Natty at ringside sort of sniping at each other, so... I mean, the, the title scene is is hot there for, for the SmackDown women's uh, roster. I mean, they all have a focus. They all have a character. And I think that's something that they're doing much better than Raw. Because Raw, really, outside of your top girls, you, you've done nothing with the rest. Yeah, it's basically just well, whoever Charlotte's facing at the moment. <laughs> and that's who gets focused on. And then everybody else is kind of there. So, like you said, it seems like everybody seems to care about this title. They really are in there about including all the women. Obviously, now they have to forget about Eve Marie, so that's something that uh, they don't have to worry about right now, and the, everything's even. So it's going to be interesting how they put Eve Marie back into this. And, you know, Naomi and Natty have their issues from... Uh, I mean, they could even go and roll footage from Total Divas if they wanted to, uh, just to kind of add stuff in there. Um, it's, uh, it's a cool thing that they're getting the women or, or getting time and getting uh, showcased in that way and the in the tag scene they had two tag matches here for the tag tournament with um ascension and the usos you kind of knew who was going to win that the usos and you kind of knew who american alpha was going to beat brizongo but man that match was pretty good yeah i, I gotta agree i thought both those matches were done well and sure like you said you kind of figured with both of those matches who was going to win my only thing that I'm curious to see how it all plays out in the end is what heel team are you going to have? Because I don't foresee the Usos getting the tag pass so quickly being that I don't remember which Uso it was who was always injury prone. Uh, they both been injured at certain points. So but, I think Jay yeah. had the longer injury. But yes, yeah, since they're both injury prone, I don't think WWE is going to want to put the tag titles on them so quickly. I see, honestly, I mean, I don't want to, I guess, give them my, my I figure in the end, I, I still think American Alpha is getting the title in the end. I'm just curious to see if it is American Alpha, what that heel team is that's going to go up against them. Because right now, all the heel teams that are on SmackDown between the Vaudevillains, the Ascension, and Brizongo, 
I don't really know if any of them would be viable teams to go up against American Alpha if they are to win the whole thing. Well, now they got to come up with another team out of nowhere to face Slater and Rhino. Right. So. The, um... That's sort of the rough part of the tournament is that once you crown the champions, you don't really have a ton of contenders left because everybody else just got beat on the road to crowning a champion. That being said, I think that's why they had the match with Brizongo be as competitive as it was, was to make at least a heel team on this night look somewhat credible. Because those there were a couple of those false finishes where I really thought they might go with Febreze simply because... You know, American Alpha is still kind of new, and maybe they don't want to pop the cork on them and winning the title so soon, but they went the other way. I'm glad they did, though. This was a really solid match between them and really set up well for the main event, I think, which was an incredible match. You know, I actually think with the Uso sort of a... Actually, I thought Brian was really good in asking him the question of, why do you guys think you're sort of getting a mixed reaction now? And they actually are, are allowed to say it's because of them being associated with Roman. And actually, I wouldn't be too surprised if the Usos won because they think that they might get booed against American Alpha because, honestly, you can't have everybody that's a, other than The Miz, you can't have all the other titles be held by faces. I think it's almost clear that Becky's probably going to be your first champion for the women. You already have Dean as your your top male champion and even if Dean doesn't go on, if, say, AJ beats Dean, AJ's still in that. He's a heel, but he also gets a sometimes face reaction. You kind of need to have maybe the Usos be the tag champions and have American Alpha chase them a little bit. You want to just – if you give it to American Alpha right away, what's the, like, big gain that you get as an audience to really follow them if they get it from the word go, you know? Yeah, when you, when you put it like that, it, it makes a bit more sense to almost have it where you you give the Usos, who are an established team already, give them the titles for a bit, let them have, have a run with it, and then have American Alpha down the road take the titles and kind of have it where you have a feud. I mean, but I'll be honest, if you have a feud between the Usos and American Alpha, those are not going to be terrible matches at all. Very true. So I'm going to sit here and we're going to go through... Um, let me see if I could find the own. Ah, oh, they don't have it separated by show. This makes me upset. Hold on, let me see if I can. Yes, they do. Never mind. Okay, so let's see if we can find the two people. Let alone, you know, they're still doing the Kurt Hawkins facts. So uh, I don't think he's going to show up quite yet. Who do you think they could pair as a team to face Slater and Rhino? Uh, I mean, because, well, you, obviously, I mean, e- either whether it's Slater and Rhino or they have the Vaudevillains go against Slater and Rhino and have the Hype Bros go against another team, it's got to be somebody. Do you think that they would maybe try to continue the story with Corbin and Kalisto and try to put them together? Do I would those think- go ahead. One no, basically, I Basically, what I was going to say is that could work, but could you also possibly see an NXT team come up, possibly? I think that depends, I guess, on the team. Because um, it'd be interesting if the like the Revival came up out of nowhere, but I think you pair Kalisto up with somebody, just because at least Kalisto has some sort of tag team title you know, in, in the can that he's, that he's held before. Whether it's with Baron Corbin or somebody else, I don't know. But I, I'm sure it's going to be Kalisto and somebody. Seriously, because Alberto Del Rio is injured. <laughs> or not injured, uh, suspended. suspended. Um, you pretty much, here's who you have left. You have Apollo Crews and Kalisto. They could be a team. Um, you have Baron Corbin. You, have, you could have Bray and Eric Rowan if they wanted to just have them be there just to take a spot so they don't have to be creative. But it's literally Bray and Rowan or Kalisto and Apollo Crews and maybe Baron Corbin comes and breaks up the match or something. 
or cost them the win and Slater and Rhino win, but they literally only have like three feet four. <laughs> it's it's it could crazy. Be how... and Rowan out of nowhere too. I guess that's weird, but yeah. Big guys, they're both heels. All I the... could t- I could totally see just Corbin just get mad at Rowan and want to beat him up though. Yeah. That's uh, possibly. I mean, Cruz and Kalisto, I think, wouldn't be too bad. You get yeah, that? Yeah, I mean, go ahead. No, but what I was just gonna say is, I, I, I think that would make the perfect sense almost because you, they, yeah, of course, I mean, Kalisto is more of a luchador type, but I mean, they both have the speed, they both have the athleticism. Uh, I think it would, it would probably be apparent that. I mean, I don't foresee it going that long, so to speak. But it's something that if they pair those guys up, I think it would work out great. Uh, Paul, I mean, I always made that. Uh, I wish Neville and Apollo Cruz could have been together. I guess that's the closest you're going to get. I I don't know if it's the same, but I, it'll do. I mean, they just need to be a team that. Rhino and, and Slater can overcome because they obviously have the story moving forward. So True, true that. And so basically we go to AJ Styles and Dolph Ziggler. Dolph does not win, of course, to continue his story. AJ wins clean with the Styles class. Uh, Freaking great match here, though. Love the fact that they got a lot of time, too. Yeah, I... I, I agree 100%. I thought the match was, was done very well. I thought, honestly, I think both those guys have a ton of chemistry together because they're, uh, yeah, they're not similar to, yeah, obviously Dolph came up in the WWE and AJ kind of came up through the independent scene, but they're both of them, their in-work is very similar. And I think, I don't foresee this being the last time we see Styles versus Ziggler in a SmackDown right. I mean, whether uh, whether this was just the stuff that dreams were made of or actually happened, it was great. And uh, I think they, they had a few bumps on the road towards the end, but by the time you get to the last two-thirds of this match, they're rocking and rolling and just absolutely killing it. And put on... I, I, there were some good matches at SummerSlam, but this one, this was pretty gosh darn good week for wrestling, if you include this match. This was amazing. Uh, how do you feel about the... They teased this last week. They do Bray and Randy Orton. I like the fact what Bray said about how Lesnar reminded Orton that he can get hurt and that Bray's a god. You know, he doesn't uh, ever die. He doesn't ever get hurt. You like uh, Randy and Bray as a program? Yeah, I mean... My big thing coming out of SummerSlam, and I, I mentioned this in one of the most recent articles I did, is where do you go with Randy Orton from there? Obviously, the loss he took at SummerSlam was a pretty brutal loss. And <clears throat> pairing him up with somebody like a Bray Wyatt, I think, is the, has, first of all, has money written all over it. Because I think both those guys can do great promo work. I'm just curious to see if they are given enough time to put a story together. And this isn't one of those things of, well, we're going to have, have you guys go to the feud by like, Backlash, and then by the next uh, SmackDown paper, which I think is Hell on the Cell in October sometime, then you guys aren't fighting anymore. I think if you give these guys enough time to build up some sort of story together and kind of build up this whole thing, then I think these guys, I think these guys can really have a great feud. I think this could be a really interesting feud simply from the fact that it could be something that gets Bray back on track. Um, it gets him feuding with somebody who's pretty high up in the pecking order, and it keeps him sort of interesting with, with somebody who, uh, but, I mean, maybe as over as he's ever been because when he came out tonight, that crowd was super hot for him. And uh, I'm really interested to see where it goes. Yeah, me too. I'm uh, glad that Bray's getting a program that matters and it's against a guy that's, you know, in that echelon that he likes. Uh, you know, they Randy, they see Randy as a big star. Obviously, now he's kind of hurt and kind of going down a bit. So Bray's there to be Bray and pick up some scraps and stuff. I like that. 
Um, the the promo stuff, maybe if Orton doesn't talk as much and it's more Bray talking, that'd be good. But you know the matches are going to be good with these two, so that's the the plus. And we did get continuation subtly with Shane about Brock Lesnar. Him and him and Brock are not over. Oh, we talked about this during the SummerSlam thing that I hope to God it's Shane has a representative because it would make sense with the Undertaker story of I learned my lesson the first time. But, John, what do you think? Do you like the possibility? What if they do have a Shane and Brock match? How do you feel about that? And if you had to pick a representative for Shane, who do you think it could be? If they honestly do Shane versus Brock, I think you should just bring an ambulance there. I think, honestly, he would just destroy Shane. Shane, yes, he had his match against Undertaker at, at WrestleMania 32 this next year was okay. But you can tell not being in the ring for as long as Shane has not been, has been out, of, out of WWE, he was really bad in that match. You put him against somebody like a Brock Lesnar, who, let's be honest, he doesn't really care, so to speak. It, it's not going to be a long match. And to answer your second question, as far as who I think the representative would be, there's only one person who you can do it. I think it would be the most ideal one. The Joe. Uh, I think... Good. The, the, only, no, the only thing I would say with that, though, is you, you bring him up, have sh- almost do something similar to what Mick Foley did with Bailey on Raw, have Shane turn on and go... But we just signed the hottest free agent in wrestling, and we bring up Samoa Joe. Samoa Joe's first thing is, well, I'm here to go after Brock Lesnar. I, I think that's a fine idea. I, I really hope they don't do Brock versus Shane. I think mean, it'd be just a chore to sit through because we already know how that's going to go. If Shane does get somebody to come fight for him, I think it's it's got to be what John. It's got to be somebody already on SmackDown. Uh, so if we wait to get the payoff there, and Samojo happens to be there, maybe it's Joe. Um, I mean, you also have to wonder if if that's the feud in the time where they want somebody to actually beat Brock and get the get the rub. And if it's Joe, then absolutely, uh, because you'll make Joe for you know from here till Kingdom Come. But if you go with somebody else. Who's already on the roster? I I haven't a clue. Yeah, when Brock first came, he already had the match with Cena, so you don't want to do that again. And he had the feud with Cena again, uh, which you know with the where he just beat the total crap out of him, and Cena didn't do anything. Uh, so I don't think you want to do that again. The only ones that make sense are. Samoa Joe, if you want to go the route of let's make somebody, which they should. And if they didn't do it with Dean Ambrose, they definitely better do it with Joe. Uh, I mean, I know he's got another. I think he has one more WrestleMania after this, right? This is, Or is that the end? That's the last one. He signed a three-year deal a couple of years ago. I know it's not the 2018, so... Yeah, I think it would be. WrestleMania would be the last one. So if that's the last time he ever does anything in WWE, I would hope that they have a plan of it better be Samoa Joe. What I'm scared of is that uh, they don't have Goldberg come out there and talk smack for nothing. And that they're going to try to do Goldberg and Brock again. But we know how that worked out the last time. Brock wasn't signed and neither was Goldberg. You know, do they want to have a repeat of that? Just, I really hope they go the route of making somebody. I mean, and not be for the spectacle. It, it would be almost a waste of that whole having him beat, um, having him beat Taker and do all that because you still haven't had a person that's really, you had Seth do the cheap thing and win, but you never had somebody that's actually truly beat him, beat him like that. Right. Well, I think that sort of covers everything from SmackDown. Um, so the only thing we got left to do is give it a rating one out of ten. John, what do you think in here for SmackDown? Uh, I give it a seven. I thought it had a lot of good moments because it was trying to build up all the backlash and being that backlash is too. So you kind of had to do that. So I like how they didn't focus so heavily on 
uh, some of them, and they kind of looked at it as, well, now we're going to the backlash, so let's get into high gear. I thought, the only reason why I gave it a 7 and not higher, is I thought there was a few moments where it was kind of iffy, kind of boring. I, and I agree with what you guys said earlier, that the Heath Slater thing was a comedy thing, but I hope that they do something with him. Because I think, personally, he's a very talented wrestler, and the fact that you keep giving him these comedic roles, I think it's almost killing his character and killing his gimmick, so to speak. So that's why I say give it, I'm giving it a 7 out of 10. Uh, I think it's a little better than 7. I'm going 7.5. Uh, the main event and the, the American Alpha Febreze match was quite good. And uh, I, everything else I thought was, was entertaining. The timing was good. Um, I mean, if SmackDown could ever figure out how the right time to take a commercial, I'd be grateful. But, you know, you got to take the good with the bad. Uh, well, we have uh, the fourth co-host of the show calling in here. Chris Lemshi. how you doing, man? I'm doing pretty good. Just finished uh, watching Talking Smack, which ended on a hell of a promo by The Miz. You guys catch that? Yeah, I watched it, man. That was amazing. Yeah, he needs he needs to bring more of that fire and intensity onto TV because if he does, man, he could be back to to the main event level with that kind of intensity. Yeah, I mean that was uh, like that almost felt like a shoot. Like he just made yeah, see, that, that, that's what I loved about it. I, I, it made me oh god, is this is this shoot? Does it work? Is it shoot? It's, it's stuff like that. Like I wish they. It's like the Cesaro promo that he cut on YouTube or for WWE.com. I wish they'd bring more of that to television because that's just more intriguing. Yeah, he like made Brian Storm off the set because he was so mad about the fact that uh, he charged Brian with like, why don't you come back, dude, if uh, you love WWE so much or whatever, you love wrestling so much. And Brian and, was like, and well, they and won't let me. His- and he mocked his promo from last year saying he'd come back in a year and reclaim the Intercontinental title. I was like, damn. It's gotten deep. Yeah, it was uh, freaking great, man. I mean, what did you think about the uh, the titles? The uh, SmackDown, the women's title, the tag titles. Both of them. How do you think? What do you think about what? Uh, how they look? I, I like the look of them. I like the look of the the women's title, even though it's it's a Divas title, but like with a blue background. But blue and white just looks better than like an all red. Uh, I, I not, I'm not one of those people who shit on the universal title, but it it just it's too gaudy and too red. It's like the universal title is the perfect title if Eva Marie ever won a championship, because <laughs> it would be gimmick for her. That's true. Uh, but no, I like the, I like the the women's title. Uh, I like that it's going to be a six pack challenge. I I'm pulling for Becky because I I want Becky to win something. She wasn't an NXT champion. She was never a women's champion on Raw be awesome if she was the first women's champion, but I'd see it going to Nikki Bella, which I had no problems with. She's improved over the, over the past couple of years, so that's fine with me. The tag title belt's good, too. Again, pulling, pulling for American Alpha for that, for the first t- SmackDown champion. You like the you like the nickels and pennies now for the tag titles? Yeah. It's better, it's better than coppers for the, the Raw ones. <laughs> uh, anything from the show that you liked or didn't like, or... I'll, I'll just say this. I, I'm loving SmackDown more than Raw because I'll give SmackDown this. It's booked more consistently. The right people always go over. They have smarter finishes. And it's, it reminds me of SmackDown back in the old days, in the old brand split, where Raw may have gotten all the star power, but SmackDown, all with the writing, is so much more crisp. And it, it does help that the show is only two hours, but still, it's, be, it's being booked more consistently. And which, that's the one thing I like about SmackDown. It's, if only it had more stars on it, it'd be leagues better than Raw. Uh, yeah. I would argue that even without the star power, it's still leagues better than Raw. But well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, if, if like a Cesaro and Sami Zayn came over to SmackDown, they they would they would do more with them than Raw's doing with them right now. Very true. Very true. And uh, yes, yeah, so somebody posted in the Facebook group, uh, Aaron. That Miz promo is going to open our podcast on Thursday. Uh, so you will get to hear it if you didn't. Uh, but, uh, yeah, any, anything – I mean, I totally agree. Uh, they Somebody asked a question in the group yesterday, and, man, Raw has just been 
it's been just okay or just total junk since that first episode. Total mm-hmm. 180 from that first episode. SmackDown has increasingly well, gotten better and more consistent. Well, thing is, that first episode of Raw, it's like they blew their load with that. They, when, you do some, when, it, when you do a show like that, people, you're going to give people this expectation, oh, it's going to be like this every week, when it can't be like that every week. Whereas like with SmackDown, yeah, sure, it didn't have a strong start, but it's, it's set the pace of what we got right now, and it, it's building perfectly. I just, think? uh, I think the way that they had SmackDown work out is it's just a more interesting watch that, because they have so much they have to do to make it into a show that's even close to being on the level of Raw. Mm-hmm. And all the work they're putting into it is it's paying off slowly but surely. And I think that, I mean, just the entire payoff of a show going from meh to good is an infinitely more, you know, fun ride than watching a flagship established show like Raw and just sort of watch them continue to do the same old shit. Yeah, and also it helps with SmackDown. It's just, just a better flow. Like, there's always a show running storyline with SmackDown where Raw, it's just, it's just all over the place. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't know if it's because of three hours or what, but SmackDown, it just runs, it runs like a perfect story from beginning to end. Like, it's even giving Heath Slater a, a character story, which is, which is what I'm loving about this right now. Uh, John, I mean, what do you think about what's been better for you since the brand split? Raw or SmackDown? Well, I, I got to go with what you guys are saying. I, I think SmackDown, yeah, it's going to take them a bit of time to kind of establish themselves. And being that they don't have as many guys as Raw does, obviously, because of the fact SmackDown is only two hours, I think keeping the two hours, I think, is much better. Because you see on Raw, they have very odd segments that just don't make any sense and kind of does not let the, the show flow well enough, where on SmackDown, they stick to more of the wrestling side and to less of the drama side, almost to an extent what Cesar said in his promo after he got drafted. And I agree with what he said then, and it's coming to true now. SmackDown is more of a wrestling show, while War is more of the quote-unquote soap opera show, so to speak. Yeah, that's true, man. Uh, and it's not just a soap opera show. It's just sometimes there's been weeks of Raw where Raw was just like that one before SummerSlam was, oh, my God. I don't know what we were watching. <laughs> that night was just like somebody just took a total turd on Raw and said, okay, here's here's the show tonight. I mean, <laughs> like we gave it a three, I think, that <laughs> night. Oh, it was so bad. Um, SmackDown has not had a show that was that bad yet. I mean, they've had they mm-hmm. had one show that was sort of just kind of blah or whatever. But aside from that, they've sort of been at least good to, to very good. And this is another one where they knew what the direction was and they went with it with everybody. You know, uh, you like the uh, Randy and Bray, Chris? <laughs> yeah, me and my friend Alex, we've been waiting for an Orton and Bray Wyatt feud because the the promos between the two of them are going to be hilarious. But I do like where they're going with uh, with with that. It's again, it's it was set up, it was teased last week, and they're coming and they're going, they're following through with it. I think the program's going to be really good. I expect Orton to to win this one because he lost to Lesnar, but it's going to make for interesting television. So I'm, I'm all for that. All right. Well, guy, uh, any, any, what would you uh, give Smith on a rating, Chris? I give it seven, seven and a half. That's where I was going with a seven and a half as well. Paul, did you do yours before Chris called? Yeah. Seven and a half. Oh, okay. So, all right. Well, that does it, guys. Uh, that's it for SmackDown. I uh, want to thank John for calling in and helping us out tonight. No problem. And Chris, of course, fourth co-host, always welcome and always adding great things to the show. Uh, no problem. Always happy to call in. All right. Well, uh, of course, everybody, we did a Raw review in our w Tim episode 208 part one or 209 part one sorry i'm forgetting the numbers now we did so many uh where we uh, reviewed uh ring of honor death for dishonor 14 and of course the ROH tv show and talked about that jericho and the, that brock battle backstage and a few other things um and of course uh be on the lookout for the thursday show which will have us uh talking about uh tna and 
NXT, what uh, the next NXT after uh, Takeover and whatever else is going on in uh, wrestling then. So until then, everybody, uh, have a good night and see you later. Later, folks. Thank <laughs> you.